will call this meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Proceedings. I need a motion to approve the City Council minutes for the date of June the 27th, 2017. Do I have a motion? Motion by Alvin Vieira, second by Alvin uh, Dexter Johnson. Any questions? <coughs> Roll call. Vieira. Aye. Vieira, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Farrellone. Aye. Farrellone, aye. Thompson. Aye. Thompson, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Aye, Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Prosto. Aye. Prosto, aye. Bogano. I'm looking for a mistake that I caught. You caught it already? Yeah, it's okay. Then I. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, well, nice, yeah. Thank you very much. Council? Good evening. You are all welcome as observers to tonight's meeting. Do I remind you that the purpose of the meeting is for the deliberation of the city council and the mayor regarding city business and governance. If you intend to speak, please watch recognized by the mayor. Approach the podium and ask for name and address. Please be further advised. Comments may be limited to three minutes or according to the appropriate city personnel for follow-up. Thank you. Anyone? Let me get a, uh, and then your, you, sir, Stone. Ms. Ms. Stone, and then yourself. Thank you. Marcia Stone, 12761 Sacramento. Mayor, I just have a couple of questions around the dissolution of the 911 center. Um, are the dispatchers in Orland going to be trained as to the layout of the city <coughs> and that type of thing so they know where to dispatch? Yes. Are, are they going to come and that we're going to make the plan so they can come and record. In fact, one of the ideas is that our, since our dispatchers are going that way, that they may be the ones that can initially be training not only themselves but also the ones in displays of the layout. But we will get whatever plans necessary to get them over here to, to know okay. our streets. All right, thank you. One other question. Yes. Um, have, you, have you gotten the grant through the grass cutting? Because there are so many. We under do have we do have some okay. of the funding, and we're starting to use that. Particularly 126 on a block of Bear of Elm. There's one on the west side. We'll make the notation. Oh, we'll make the notation. Okay, thank you. Let me get the gentleman over here. From the metals. From the association. Your name and address. Good evening. Dr. Miller, 12331 Middle Lane, on behalf of the Fairways of Blue Island Homeowners Association. I have two letters that I'd like to read on behalf of the association, do I have your permission? Yes, sir. Greetings, Mayor Vargas and City Council. Uh, let me first begin by thanking Michael Miller, which is myself, for reading the letter. Due to a health issue, I am unable to attend today's meeting. <clears throat> My name is Nicole Benton, and I reside at 12415 Meadow Lane, Unit 4, at the Fairways. <clears throat> I am the original and only homeowner to reside here. Before moving to the fairways, I resided in 1924 West Cardinal Canal Street in Blue Island. As you can tell, I love my city of Blue Island. I believe Blue Island is a safe place to live and raise kids too. I raised my son here and he's on his way to college in the fall. Over the 16 years of me residing at the fairways, my living room windows have been broken several times. Years ago, I had to start a tradition. When I arrived home from work, instead of driving to my garage, I now drive to the front of my home to see if any windows have been hit with a golf ball. Mr. Mayor, 
I am a terrific citizen. I pay my property tax to the city faithfully, but for services I don't utilize. My 2016 first installment property tax bill was due by March 1st, 2017. Uh, she paid 2,500, she goes on and on. Uh, basically what she's saying is, uh, the last time we called upon the Blue Island, not emergency number at 708-385-1313, a police officer is always dispatched to my home. She's an educator. Uh, she thinks that the police department, uh, Blue Island does an excellent job, uh, but she's very discouraged that the city, and in particular you, Mayor Vargas, has done nothing to respond to any of our requests. Dear Mayor Vargas, the citizens of Fairways of Blue Island have requested that I write this letter on their behalf. This is from the Fairways of Blue Island Homeowners Association at large. We have a unique problem, and we need the support of the city council. But in order to get that support, we need to share our problem. As the fairways was developed back in the year 2000, under the previous administration, we were given an opportunity to be reimbursed for golf ball damage to our windows or siding along the buildings in our complex. While the previous mayor agreed to this reimbursement with, on behalf of the city council with the legal department, uh, we did not abuse this privilege, nor did we use all of the funds allocated to the project. Although the administration has changed, we as Blue Island citizens <coughs> continue to pay our taxes, follow the rules, and remain thoughtful and considerate citizens. Those things were not contingent upon working with the previous administration. During 2015 and 2016, we have repeatedly attempted to reach you, Mayor Vargas, to discuss the problem which is unique to the citizens residing in the fairways. We had one meeting with you at the golf course clubhouse, and we are still awaiting your confirmation of support, and in addition to this, response to our many uh, emails to you and your office. Most recently, you came out, you and your assistant and your alderman, they came to visit our residents and assured us that you will address and resolve this issue. We believed you and we voted for you. Yeah. Now we are reaching out to you to support our community. We're sick and tired of a non-response. We need you to set up a fund as the previous administration did to take care of the damage that's caused by the golfers at the Meadows Golf Club. I have two copies of this letter to be submitted for your records. Uh, just like to say, we're at our wit's end. We don't know what to do. Well, we don't get a response. Well, let me put it this way. I know the city attorney and myself, which was how long ago, we sat there. We sat there for an hour waiting for someone from the association to show up to the second meeting that was scheduled subsequent to the first meeting. Is that your only answer? I've gotten a copy of emails here where your office has never responded. Okay, let me read. Tuesday, November 15th, no response. You want the time? I don't need the time, sir. We okay, let me read another one. Response was you're talking meeting. about one meeting which you did not really let us know that you were going to be there. Yes, we did. You didn't, re you didn't let my office know. I won't argue with you, but I have it in writing where you have not responded. We discussed the city's position regarding golf ball damage. September 16, 322 p.m., okay, so no what, response. What can we do? Ma'am, September 29, 2016, no response. November 15th, 2016, no response. And you're alluding to one, 
incident, ma'am. You want us to respond to something we have already provided a response to. I the haven't received a response. Where's the has response? Has not changed since we met at that meeting originally with both homeowners associations <laughs> present. I so represent Fairways of Blue is Island. The same. I represent Fairways of Blue Island where the damage is still occurring. We just want to know what are you going to do? It's not the city's responsibility to be accountable for the actions of third parties. You accepted the risk of golf ball damage when you moved on to a golf course. No, it is no, not the city's no, responsibility no. to accept damage caused by third parties that are unidentifiable. That it was agreed true. upon at the meeting that if the police comes out and investigates, which they will come when they're called, if they're able to identify the person responsible for creating the damage, we will take all necessary steps to make is sure that that, that person is held Ma'am? And if, if it is unable to be determined who is the responsible party, we have reconfigured the golf course. We have looked at moving the holes to try to account for homes that are at the edge of the golf course where fly balls can go. And at the end of the day, we still have come to the same conclusion that you were advised of when we met the last time. May I speak? You got two minutes. Okay. Uh, you're advised, okay, that the previous administration realized the problems. Okay, it is our opinion, based on living there since the year 2000, that the solution is to take some of the profits from the Meadows Golf Club, like the previous administration did, in the amount of $2,500, which is not a lot of money. We should not have to stand here for that. It's an insult. Yes, that is definitely. It is an insult. We had one meeting with the previous administration. The problem was addressed. Don't know what your uh, attitude is disgusting. Not an attitude, sir. It's the position that no, it's an attitude. You're it's you're pretty much talking about, sir. Let her speak. It has nothing to do with an attitude. We have looked at this. We have met. We have looked at this multiple times and multiple departments. We have got the police department to make sure that someone goes out every time there is an incident to get a report, to get it documented, and we have looked at this. It has nothing to do with an attitude one way or the other. This is the reality of the situation. Of a whole it is not the reality. Course. Wait a minute. It's your reality. It, it is, is not, not reality the reality. Why can't not reside on the golf course. It is why the can't you, why can't you accept the fact that the previous administration dealt with it in a different Format. And that is, and that the, is the reality. You choose not to do anything about it. They did deal with it in a different format, and that's a different administration. Right. Okay. Let's deal with that point. Why? Uh -huh. Why so can't we you don't have to discuss this back and forth? Then? We'll set up a meeting yeah. and we'll put it everything up. Is that okay? We'll, well set up a meeting tonight. If you tell us about the meeting, I don't want to go through this yet. I don't want we'll another insult from your legal department. I have my calendar here. Once the meeting's over, this meeting, we will set a date. And okay, time. it's just that simple. We're Thank reasonable you. people, but we will not take being insulted by your administration. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Go ahead, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Michael Wilson. I don't live in Blue Island now. I live in Chicago. I have businesses in Blue Island. I've spoken with Dexter Johnson and the mayor. I want to bring some businesses also to Blue Island. We also have a program that um, we are paying, that started in the city of Chicago. One I started, one with Arnie Duncan, where we I took the young men that are in different gangs and we brought them together and we taught them how to do construction. That's working out real good, 175 guys. Not asking for any money from the city. We're asking, we have another program that we're asked the businesses to actually employ some other young men and women. They don't have to pay them. We would actually pay them $10.50 an hour to work. The thing is, what we're trying to do is stop a lot of violence and be able to try to help not just one city, but the state of Illinois to try to bring some things together. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? I'll just need your name and address. 
Nick Simpson, 2247 Prairie Street. Um, I'm sorry that this is kind of settled business, but I was out of town for the last city council meeting. I'm slightly frustrated with how the garbage rollout was deployed. Um, got the alert from Code Red on Saturday saying new garbage cans, whatever. I'm like, why is this going out on the emergency alert? But whatever. So then I get the second alert on the Monday or another one about the garbage cans. But meanwhile, I was actually out of town. And so I'm frustrated because basically there was like three or four days, and oh, by the way, here's your new garbage cans on your front lawn, and I get why they were put on the front lawn, but I didn't have an opportunity, and nothing screams, break into my house, like garbage cans have been sitting there for three or four days because I didn't have a chance to bring them back or make arrangements. So I guess in the future, please give us a little bit more lead time besides a few days to make arrangements for those sorts of things because there are other circumstances like this. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, right, Greg Lock, how 129.15 Elm Street. Yes, um, I'd like to ask if we could vote to approve cruise night for the summer on York Street beginning this coming Monday, July 17th. I sent a written notice to Randy, but I believe I didn't get it in on time. I wasn't aware of the deadlines. So I'd like to ask if you could simply approve cruise night. From what time to what time? Uh, it would be July 17th and probably the end of September, okay. and from about 5 to 8 p.m. And we'll be on York Street from Western to Gregory. Right. Great way to promote Blue Island. So from 5 p.m. to 8 every Monday then? Yes. Starting? Except for Labor Day. Okay. I have I have a letter here. It says, Dear Randy, the Chamber would like to request permission from the City Council to hold weekly cruise nights this summer to draw residents and visitors to our up-down shopping district. We plan to close York Street between Western and Gregory from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday evenings during the months of July, August, September, beginning July the 17th. We'd also like to hold one or two on Old Western if allowed. We will coordinate with Public Works and the Police Department. Cecily Greg Lockhart, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry. That's it, right? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Now I'll move on to the next uh, business. Mayor's announcement report of city officials, presentations, and resolutions. We did get a, I did receive a letter from IDOT um, all construction will start up again. Uh, as you see, Broadway Street, they've started again. So thank you that, that the state finally reached the budget and all projects, uh, road projects in around Blue Island, whether they're in progress now or in the future, will gear up and continue going in the future. And we'd like to thank the, everybody in Springfield for that. Uh, any bids? No bids, sir. Uh, city clerk's business? <coughs> oh, you know what, let me do this. Before I forget it, I need a motion uh, to approve the uh, can maybe a consensus for the cruise nights, and then we'll draw it up officially at the next city council meeting uh, to allow uh, cruise nights every Monday again on York Street between Western and Gregory from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. starting this coming Monday. And then from my understanding, this coming Monday would be the Roman Chariot, the local uh, car club would, would host that one. Do we have a consensus? I got a question. Sure. Um, I don't think we should do motions and, and take roll calls if it's not on the agenda. That's open meetings, unless I'm incorrect. It's a consensus. It's, it's not. It's not. Well, it's just, we don't have to do no roll call then or anything no. like that. Then. It's a consensus. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, go ahead. Can, can, I just am curious. I think it's a great event, but I am curious. Do we know? I mean, is there additional costs that we incurred <coughs> and so forth uh, for the events? For security? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's from that is the, the cops, police, uh, the part timers. So they don't, we're not uh, paying for it? Well, that's the thing, that's what will probably be our, our cost. Do we know what that is? We can kind of figure as to how it was last year. Yeah. Okay, I, I just would like to have known that, I guess, before we had to vote on this, okay. probably. You're not. Yeah, we'll vote. We're going to take a consensus and then it'll come before. Like the first one, I'm going to present under city clerk's business is a lot of party consensus for the last meeting. So we have to ratify that. Okay. This evening's but, but this is not a one. Yeah. Is there a consensus? Go ahead. Do they need the insurance for uh, for this? I know they had to. Uh, no. No, we're not using the park, just the street. 
and the park district is already taken care of the park. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay. City clerk? Um, so there is a consensus? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I hope we voted out the next meeting now. July the 7th, which is Friday. All right, city clerk. We have a motion to approve the uh, request of the ratified request of the, from the last meeting probably in the which they had a block party at 3352 Madison on July 4th from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. Council approved this item at 7 6 Okay, motion. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Motion by Alderman Fairwall, second. Is there a second on this one? By Alderman Dexter Johnson, roll call. Yeah. Aye. Yeah, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Fairwall. Aye. Fairwall, aye. Thompson. Aye. Thompson, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Thank you. Next. Next, I have a motion to approve a request from Delano Lee to have a block party at 2130 West 122nd Street on August 4th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. We have a motion by Alderman Vieira. Do I have a second? By Alderman Pulos. Any questions? Roll call, please. Vieira. Aye. Vieira. Aye. Rita. Aye. Rita. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Aye, Paramount. Aye. Paramount. Aye, Thompson. Aye. Thompson. Aye, Carr. Aye. Carr. Aye, Pittman. Aye. Pittman. Aye, Slattery. Aye. Slattery. Aye, Poulos. Aye. Poulos. Aye, Johnson. Aye. Johnson. Aye, Rostow. Aye. Rostow. Aye, Pilato. Aye. Pilato. Aye, Eleven Nights. Thank you. Thanks. I need a motion to approve a request from Kathy Garner to have a block party on 19th and Maple Avenue on August 5th, starting at 10 a.m. The motion Alvin uh, Pittman, second by Alvin Carr. Any questions? There's no time please. for uh, just 10 a.m. to what? <coughs> it says on the application, can't go past 10 o'clock. Okay. All right. Thank you. Roll call, please. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Vermal. Aye. Vermal, aye. Thompson. Aye. Thompson, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bolano. Aye. Bolano, aye. 11 aye. Thank you. Thanks. The last one is a motion to approve a request for now. I'm here to have a block party on her again from her 22nd, 123rd Street on August 19th from 12 noon until 10 p.m. Is that a motion, Alvin Bolano? Yeah. Motions. Do we have a second? Alvin Farrell. Any questions? Roll call, please. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Farrell. Aye. Farrell, aye. Thompson. Aye. Pardon me? Aye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thompson, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bilotto. Aye. Bilotto, aye. Thank you very much. Anything else? Yeah. City Treasurer? No report this time, Your Honor. Thank you. City Attorney? No report. Committee reports, Community Development Committee? Any report? No? Let's just move on. Finance Committee? Mayor, yeah, I will be reporting for Chairman uh, Jan Austin from the Finance Committee. Meeting was held, called to order June 28th, 20, 2017 at 7 p.m. Members, Alderman Holly, Alderman Fernwell, Alderman Thompson, Alderman Vieira, and Alderman Austin. Absent, Alderman Frosto. Also present, Director John Reeder, Deputy Finance Director, Lori Brown, Mark Miller, the Building Department, and Mr. Dillon from SMS. Public comments, no comments. Accounts payable. This 
discussion? All the Holly question check for planters on Western uh, for planters on Western Avenue. Alderman Cornwall asked to compare a report showing appropriations versus budget. Accounts payable for June 29, 2017, $424,242.37. Motion by Alderman Cornwall and second by Holly. Motion carried. I would like to put that in the form of a motion. We've got a motion to add a second. Alderman Vieira, any questions? Roll call, please. Motion to have a second by Alderman Bellotto. Any questions? Roll call, please. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Rita. Aye. Vieta, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Fernwald. Aye. Fernwald, aye. Thompson. Aye. Thompson, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Twelve eyes. Thank you. Director John Reeder requests one full-time police officer to be hired. This position is needed to increase manpower. Discussion. This position is appropriated, hired, would come from civil service list. Motion by Alderman Holly, second by Alderman Vieira. Motion carried. I'd like to put this in the form of a motion. No motion. Okay. From my understanding, it's a civil service hire, so we don't need a motion. You don't need a motion. Okay. Thank okay. You. Director Reader requests purchase of four new police vehicles. Money was appropriated. Financing to be discussed with CPA at next financial meeting on 7 18 27. Motion to table by Alderman Thompson and second by Alderman Burnwall. Motion to table here. The next item on the agenda was from the scrap metal services and we have a representative, Mr. Dillon, here today. Would you like to come up, Mr. Dillon, and, and stand up? Yeah. Before we take a motion. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Dillon. I'm a, an attorney. I've been practicing the real property taxation field for almost 30 years. I'm here on behalf of scrap metal services and we're here to ask you for something. What we're asking for is the ability to take advantage of a special property tax classification created by the Cook County Board about three years ago. What this classification does is it allows an existing business to take advantage of an incentive which has already been granted some 30 years ago to someone who's going to start a new business or build a new building. This allows someone who is in the business, has an older building, and needs to repair and modify that building and make uh, investments in the business. What it does is it creates a temporary 60% reduction in the real estate taxes each year for 10 years, then it's a smaller break in the 11th and 12th year, and it goes up to the full uh, level of assessment for industrial property in Cook County, which is 25%. It is not renewable. Um, company we're referring to is uh, Scrap Metal Services and its property acquired in 2014 at 3000 West 139th Street. This came about as a result of the previous Scrap Metals company at that location having gone bankrupt. Uh, SMS stepped in, worked with the bankruptcy trustee, the bankruptcy court, made an offer to acquire the real estate and all of the equipment and immediately uh, took control of the property, hired virtually everyone who had been employed at the former company for one or two one jobs. And 
and uh, they have been building this up bit by bit as quickly as they can. The property was under maintained for many years. If you look at the book I have here, we have pictures of the project showing it's uh, it's taken a lot of wear and tear. I'm going to ask Joe Goster, the chief financial officer, to step up shortly and go through what they've done, what their business methods, what their business plan is. Um, we have a letter here from Alderman uh, Bob Polk of uh, Burn, fourth section of this uh, document, that refers to how they become a part of the community there, and the various good things they've done to support the community and help those in need, and of course, they'll step up and do the same kinds of things here. We also have in the fifth section a summary of articles pertaining to the scrap business and how tough it's been since the steel industry tank in about 19, or pardon, 2008, 2009. They're still being beaten up pretty badly by Chinese and other, other companies imports, other countries imports, which are being sold at below cost. So the impetus to cash flow we're seeking is badly needed. As Joe, Joe Lynn will explain, they've already put seven figure money into this property to rehabilitate it. They plan to do more of that. To cut to the chase as far as the tax calculations are concerned, I have a one page summary on the inside jacket of the book. What we have is a tax bill currently for 2016 payable 2017, which bills an amount of $135,000 for the whole year of 2016 payable 2017. Blue Island gets 9.88% of that total amount, which amounts to $13,444. That's 9.8%, as you say. If the Class 6B, which we're asking for, were to be granted, the taxes would become $54,334, and Blue Island's 9.88% would be $5,368. So this would cost Blue Island $7,988 a year, or approximately $750 a month. The 10-year tax on 6B, if it were reduced by way of this special emergency relief classification, they would pay $536,000. In the 11th year, they'd pay $81,000. In the 12th year, $107,000. So over the 13 years, they would pay $135,000 in taxes. If, however, you apply a 3% average inflation factor in the taxes, which is not unreasonable because the rates continue to go up, values continue to go up, they would pay a total over that period of time of $811,554 in property taxes. Even without the inflation factor, it would be $725,000. So we're asking for that relief. Um, we have all kinds of information for you here, but we don't want to overwhelm you. I'd ask that Joel Lynn be given a few minutes to explain their business model and how they operate. That's going to clarify a lot of things for you. I just need your name and your position. Uh, my name is Joanne Gosser, and I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Scott Mill Services. I, I've been employed there for about nine years. Um, we are headquartered in Burnham, Illinois, which is pretty close by here. Um, SMS has been a company that really has established their long-term relationships with the communities that they operate in. We believe in hiring from those communities. Uh, we're a full service scrap processing recycling company, as I said, with headquarters in Burnham, Illinois, which is in Cook County, also in about a 15 minute drive from here. We're a privately owned company. Our owners are Jeff and Red Gerler. Uh, they were former principals in a scrap company. They sold out and then they restarted themselves back up in 2005. Since 2005, our company has grown both nationally and internationally. We have approximately 650 employees. We are committed to this area, so when the uh, property became available in Blue Island, uh, we were really excited that we were able to purchase that out of receivership. We currently have 134 employees that work in Cook County. 27 of those work at, in the Blue Island facility. We've doubled the number of employees at that plant since we took over in 2014. 
Of the 27 that work in Blue Island, 70% actually live in Blue Island or the surrounding Cook County area. So we are always actively looking for employees in, in the area that we um, have our facilities. Uh, our operations there are that we collect scrap metal. So we collect both ferrous and non-ferrous materials, so metallic and non-metallic material. We buy from the public and we buy from it, you know, in industrial accounts. We then process the scrap and we ship it to you know, manufacturers and still mills. We have a small shredder there and then we also have a heavy media plant that uses an environmentally friendly soluble liquid system to separate metals. Um, <coughs> scrap metal is really a very highly competitive business. It's very much commodity based. Uh, in 2009, we hit the recession, it was, it was tough. It was even tougher in 2015 and 2016. Our industry had over 100 bankruptcies in those two years. As I said, we bought metal recycling systems in Blue Island out of a receivership. We hired the employees who started to invest into that, that facility. Because the prior owner didn't have any actual liquid cash, some of the maintenance and things kind of went by the wayside, but since that time, I think I've stated this, all the former employees were offered positions there. Most of them did take jobs, some of them are still there. We've re-engaged the customers in that area, and in addition, we've solicited new customers. We've had to evaluate the equipment and the building there, and knew that there was going to be some significant repairs. To date, we've spent $1.3 million in that facility. We've some, made some major repairs, we've upgraded the equipment, and brought in some additional equipment. This month alone, we are investing another $700,000 in that facility, upgrading our shredder. We are also looking at possibly upgrading our heavy media plant. Uh, in closing, I'd like to say, as you can see from our, our, our letter from Mayor Polk, you know, we are, we are a good uh, community citizens, and uh, we're hoping that you will be able to assist us at our request. I have spoken to uh, Mayor Polk from Burnham. Uh, the same thing that you are doing in that community, we would want that and more okay. in, this, in this community. Uh, are there questions from the alderman? Yes. Go ahead, alderman. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for coming out. So, in your um, this, the initial handout here, um, it says if the property is reclassified to Class 6B, where no changes being made to either the value of the property or the tax rate, um, the amount bill, and we have the amount here. What what have you guys currently applied for, and what do you plan on applying for with the Cook County Assessor to appeal your property value? and the assessments on the property. What we're doing is putting ourselves in a position to apply for a Class 6 fee to the assessor. The thing that permits that is an enabling resolution from the village or city in which the property is located, and that's why we come to you to explain what it is we're trying to do and what we propose to do with the increment in cash flow we're trying to, <clears throat> trying to generate. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you for the answer, but what have you, what have you applied for to appeal your assess value and the property value with the Cook County Assessor that would lower this rate even further. Right. Not, not regarding the Class 6B, that's going to affect your tax bill. What has been applied for in the past and what do you plan on applying for in the we future? We applied one year ago for a reduction in fair market value based upon the price we paid for the property and an appraisal by an MAI appraiser, which as you may know is um, the top shelf in terms of appraiser qualification. Uh, that appraisal was based significantly on comparable sales of property in this area. Thank you. Do you have any plans for, for future appeals in the next six months? I know assessments just went up for everybody. We don't know because we don't have our new uh, we don't have our new valuation yet. Okay. Uh, then I have another question on page two on tab, tab two. Um, you guys gave a nice breakdown of the buildings and kind of the, the poor condition they are, but then when you say what you're going to use this, this Class 6B property tax classification, what you would use with the savings from it, it would be to maintain production, employment in the Blue Island, and purchase and install an additional scrap driving machine. Nothing about 
fixing up the appearance of the building. And I know you provided some nice pictures, but it shows the flooding, the problems with the walls, damaged walls, more flooding, damaged concrete. And you mentioned you had issues in, but then you say you can use the savings not to fix it. But appearance of your property. So you're still going to have a really ugly looking property, but you're needing some money to build your business to, to scrap more metal and do other things instead. Well, that's a shortcoming on my part. Yeah, I, I would say at this point, some of the flooding has been addressed. We've leveled some of the property where there were some issues. Um, we, we understand that there are some, some issues with the external part of the building. If you've been there recently, you'll see that there were some bushes removed. There were some sidewalks put in. There is some more cosmetic things. None of that is structural, but you're correct. There is some more cosmetic things that need to be collected there. Thank you. One more question here. Um, you get, your company's been in Blue Island, or you, your company has owned this property in Blue Island since 2013? 14. 14. So in the three years you've been here, you haven't partnered with the city on anything, you haven't donated back to school events, to my knowledge, to schools, but now that you're wanting this, this tax break, it's, this is what we do with Burnham, this is what we do with all these people, so do you give us this, this break, we're going to come do all this stuff, but you didn't partner with us for the prior three years from here. I, I would say you're right. We did not create a relationship with the, with the, the city. That is correct. But we are prepared to do that on a go forward basis. I guess I have one more question. How much do you pay your employees an hour? So they range anywhere from $12 to $25 an hour, depending on what their job classification is. But 12 is the minimum. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions from the audience? Go ahead, Alderman. Uh, we, I was on the, I'm on the committee uh, where we, this was presented last uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, first, I want to you know, compliment Mr. Dillon and his company. Uh, they made a very thorough presentation. Uh, we engaged in kind of a lengthy discussion, and he provided uh, direct and clear answers to all of our questions, and I very much appreciate that. And also, having been on plan commission for a number of years, I very much support uh, business in Blue Island and wanting good business here. Uh, nevertheless, I voted against this in committee, and I will vote against it tonight uh, for a couple reasons. First off, what Alderman uh, Don just asked um, about any kind of commitment that could be made to the city about you know how we might benefit as a result of granting this relief. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not criticizing, but I'm just saying there was no uh, there was no commitment made. We we talked about uh, the fact that there are actually out of the 35 employees that are currently there, three are living in Blue Island. And uh, I particularly requested if there could be a commitment for new hires to hire from Blue Island. Uh, and they said they just couldn't do that. They couldn't make that promise. Uh, they would look, but they couldn't make the promise. Uh, again, in terms of the, the involvement they've had with the city to date, I guess it's been nil. Uh, and now they're asking for relief. Um, the uh, other thing that I want to do is just read into the record an article on the subject of tax breaks that are given to industry and um, you know why they're not always the best thing. If I could just have a minute to do that. This is from City Lab. Uh, it's a well-recognized uh, uh, group of experts in the uh, kind of city planning world. And the article is titled, Handing Out Tax Breaks to Businesses is Worse Than Useless. It's uh, published March 7 of 2017. I just read a couple of little quick excerpts from it. Uh, that call into question the value to not only the city, but frankly to the business of, of these tax incentives. Uh, an article says that uh, incentives do not vary in light, <coughs> excuse me, incentives do not vary in light of the industry characteristics that would predict greater local benefits, obvious ones like how much R&D they do, how many people they employ, or the wages they pay. So there's really very little uh, weight given to what the benefits would be or what kind of uh, industry is being uh, given benefits. The study concludes that there is little connection between the level of incentives a state forks over to businesses and its economic fortunes. A 2002 study of some 350 companies that received incentives found a negative effect on their ability to create jobs. Companies that received incentives expanded more slowly than others, and the overall effect of incentives was a reduction of 10-point jobs per establishment. The broad body of evidence on incentives finds that incentives do not actually cause companies to choose certain locations over others. Rather, companies typically select locations based on factors such as workforce, proximity to markets, and access to qualified suppliers, and then pit jurisdictions against one another to extract tax benefits and other incentives. Um, I don't see the benefit, frankly, to Blue Island uh, of this incentive uh, other than 
the possibility that we could lose the business. I don't, they seem to be doing pretty well. They made a million dollars last year, and congratulations to them. I think it's a great thing. They, they came from a position of buying a company that uh, was in bankruptcy. Obviously, they got a good, pretty good price for it. Um, they had a, some, a small loss in the first year or two, and they built a, a profitable business over time. So I really <coughs> congratulate them. And we certainly do want to support the business in every way we can. Blue Island really needs uh, revenue. We don't need to be giving it up. We can't repair our streets. Um, we need to keep this money here. May I respond to that? Just one second. There's another question. Oh, I'm going to go ahead. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what is the hours yeah. of your operation? We are currently working, I believe it is seven to four or five, and we're getting ready to add on a second shift. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, my name is Alderman Dexter Johnson, and I live right across the street from you guys. I've been there since '68. Um, do you hire people with felonies? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, are you willing to give back to the community as a uh, Alderman Donahue pointed out about what you do in Barnum. Yes, yes, we are. Okay, so can we have that in Pacifics per se, much, much as we read here? I have no problem with actually sure. giving you the six feet. Can I, can I mention something? My name's uh, Jeff Gertler. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Scrap Metal Services. And I would love to sit down with the committee and the administration to talk about how we can help the community. We haven't had an opportunity to do that, and I would be open for that whenever your calendar is submitted. Okay, this is Alderman Frost, who's also the Alderman down in that area. And we have had companies clothing down there. We also had Acme Refinery, which was another scrap metal. And I'm a scrapper, so I understand the nature of the business. Um, but also understand the nature of reciprocity. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So my thing is, is, is as a community, as a public health and safety director, John Reed, there's a lot of things that we can utilize that you guys could probably bring to the table as well as we. But also you got Mr. Wilson right there that just offered paying employees $10.50 to if it could help you buy your manpower or upgrading your manpower or up in the level of people working for you if it could help us. But I have no issue with that and you guys got a skill over there, right? Yes, we have skill. So is it possible for our officers if we had trucks that was overweight to bring them in for overweight trucks. Absolutely, yes. <clears throat> Could I just address the, in Go ahead. the incentives? Go ahead. Um, we have a similar operation, a little bit bigger in the state of Indiana. In the state of Indiana, St. Joe County gave us some, also some tax breaks, and we also got a tax exempt bond in the state of Indiana. We have since taken the employee count there from 15 to 45 in that time. So when we're looking for assistance, we're looking to grow the business, to hire people, to grow within the community. That's, that's the reason that we're here, is, is we're trying to grow and employ people in the community. Okay. All going to go ahead. Did I understand you to say you had 27 people from the city of Blue Island? No, we have 27 that are from the Cook County area. I believe there's three that are from Blue Island. Yes, in our meeting, it was only stated three people from the city of Blue Island. 27 people work that work, but they're not from the city of Blue Island. No, I don't think, I don't, if that's what I said, I misspoke. Okay, thank you. We have one other city treasurer. Go ahead. With all due respect to all the aldermen, and I appreciate a lot of good questions have come out, especially from Mr. Donahue and about the taxes and stuff. But I think that basically overall, we had our consultant expert, uh, Mr. McKenna's office, and Mark, you can probably speak on behalf of this, is that our consultant basically evaluated the whole situation, and they, get, they give us an input on the status of the whole picture. Because if I recall correctly, when you bring up the taxes and stuff, north of 139th is tip two. So there's a tip involved. There's other factors involved that are hard to explain in just one statement of the that gentleman just basically said. So it's, it's not only what the Wyland loses or gains in the overall aspect of the of the taxes, because in the way I understand it, we have more to gain. The other subject was that there were some issues, as Alderman Frost brought up in the past, 
with the, the traffic flow on 135th, I think it was. So, you know, those issues were, I think, were brought up at the committee. And I apologize, I couldn't be at the finance committee meeting at that time. But those were all discussed. The employment issue was discussed, okay? And there's certain legal things about that, basically. We can suggest, we can recommend, we can take their, their, uh, their honesty and their working relationship that they would give us Blue Islanders a preference for employment. But the main issue is how it benefits Blue Island in the long run, like the gentleman tried to explain. And Mr. McKenna, I have to take, he's the expert of TIFFs, uh, overall assessments for our business. And when, whenever we get to the six Bs and all these different types of discounts, we take their consultant as an expert. And we have to take that as an advisor, besides our own personal uh, information. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And Mark, if you want to say anything about Mr. McKenna's. No, they just they supported the proposal. Okay, so. Any other questions? Yes. Alderman Thompson? Yeah, please. may I continue then? Yes, sir. Uh, roll call vote taken. Uh, Alderman Farnwall? No. Alderman Holling? Yes. Alderman Beer? Yes. Alderman Thompson? No. Austin? Yes. Motion carried. Now I'd like to put this in the form of a motion if there's no motion. There's a motion. There's a second by Alderman Vieira. Again, we've gone through the questions. Your, mo your motion is to, to put it on, right? Yeah, to, to motion. Yeah, to approve. Motion to approve? Yes. 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 Second ballot here. Because we approved it in a No questions. Fine. We've discussed that. Roll call, please. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Rita. Um, yes. Vieta, aye. Thank you. No. Thank you, no. Farewell. No. Farewell, no. Thompson. No. I'm saying no. Carr. No. Carr, no. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. No. Slattery, no. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, I have a lot of. Just the count. Five no's. How many eyes? Six. Six. One. Six. Five no's? No. Guess <laughs> <laughs> who does it? Aye. Mayor Vargas. Aye. Mayor Vargas, aye. <laughs> it's oh, the yeah. first time in four years that That's I've That's why I said, give me a chance there, man. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other business, Alderman? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Alderman Holly announced representatives from Art Space coming to Blue Island. This is the first stage of evaluating possible development for a plan. Art Space is a nonprofit organization that uses the tools of real estate development to create affordable and appropriate places where artists can live and work. Adjournment, um, um, adjournment by <coughs> Farm Wall and second by the Arrow. Motion carried. Next finance committee meeting will be held Tuesday, July 18th at 7 p.m. Thank you very much, Alderman. Public Health and Safety Committee. Um, our meeting was held tonight, so the minutes from that will be at our next meeting. That's fine. However, I do have um, a resolution authorizing execution of intergovernmental agreement by and between the City of Blue Island and the Orland Fire Protection District for the provisions of emergency response communications and dispatching services. I'd like to put that in form of a motion. We've got a motion. Do we have a second by Alvin Poulos? Any questions? Roll call, please. Vieira. Aye. Vieira, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Farrell. Aye. Farrell, aye. Thompson. Aye. Thompson, aye. Carr. Aye. Charlie, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, and then uh, we also have an ordinance of the City of Blue Island, Illinois, dissolving the City's Emergency Telephone System Board. Thank you. Put that in form of a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? File the Poulos. Any questions? 
Broca. Vieira. Aye. Vieira, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Aronwald. Aye. Aronwald, aye. Thompson. Aye. Thompson, aye. Carr. <coughs> Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Prosto. Aye. Prosto, aye. Mulatto. Aye. Mulatto, aye. Full measure. Thank you very much. Anything else, Alderman? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, our next meeting will be held August 8th at 6 p.m. on the East Annex. Thank you very much. Municipal Services Committee, any report? Uh, no report. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, July 25th at 6 p.m. here in the East Annex. Thank you very much. Judiciary Committee, uh, no report. But our next meeting, and Lenny will back me up on this, I hope, is Monday, uh, July 17th at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Any automatic announcements or comments? Go ahead, Alderman. Um, Bethel Pentecostal Church is going to be holding their Kid Community Day on July the 15th. I believe it's from 10 until 2, so that's a nice family event. Everybody's invited to come out. And National Night Out is coming up August the 1st. That's the first Tuesday of August. We hope to see everybody out celebrating celebrating the night with the police department and the fire department. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I need a motion. Alderman, yes. go ahead. Um, I, I would like to address uh, the city council members and those people who are in your ward are giving parties. Uh, the cutoff time is 10 o'clock. Is that right? The city ward? Yes. Yes. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. We would like for that to be enforced. Please. That is fine. Two incidents in, in the fifth ward this past weekend where people are belligerent and they don't want to cut their music off at 10 o'clock. So something should be done about this. All right, we'll take that into note. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? If not, the motion. Go ahead, Alvin. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Chief. Uh, at, <clears throat> it's going to be uh, Community Care Alliance of Illinois to be down at, uh, also on August 1st. Uh, at the recreation center at one o'clock, they're actually talking about um, people that seniors that qualify for Medicaid and uh, prescription drug coverage, fitness and wellness programs, and things of that nature. So that'll be at the same uh, the same day, August first, at one o'clock at the recreation center. Thank you very much. Now, I need a motion for adjournment. Alderman Pittman, do we have a second? Alderman Rita. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Aye.